Psalms 129, A Song of Degrees Many a time have they afflicted me, but my youth, may Israel now say. And from the very beginning, as a young person in Israel today, a Jew, they've been afflicted. As a nation from the beginning, they've been afflicted. Many a time have they afflicted me from my youth, yet they have not prevailed against me. Israel stood that strong nation from Abraham. And no one has ever defeated them completely, and yet their nations that have been against them are gone. And in the tribulation period, those nations that, that helped the Jew will be blessed into the millennium. And those nations that have been against the Jew will be cast off into, into hell, into the lake of fire. If there's one group of people who has always been the object of let's get rid of them and to prove the Bible is true and right would be the Israelites, the Jew, the children of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Always and forever, though, that nation is always, because Satan knows that that's God's people. Satan knows that's where the Messiah is to come from. Satan knows that that's the apple of God's eye. And what a sorrow apple that God feels today, or getting today. Very few do listen to him and do what he says. But they're not done. There are religions out there will teach that over there in the New Testament, no, he's utterly, no, he's not utterly done with Israel. He's just set them aside. Listen, the Bible says there's neither Jew or Greek. And when they believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, the door is still open for the individual Jew. Not as a nation, but as an individual. They can be saved. The time of Jacob's trouble, the seven years is going to happen after the church age period. That is the time that God will pull the pants down of Israel and give them a spanking. And then yet come back and redeem them. God is not done with them. And the nations are, are hated against them. Jesus Christ, the plowers plowed upon my back. They made long their furrows. And that's, that's a, a deep plow that dug into the dirt. And the what it's saying is the, the back of the Lord Jesus Christ from the cat of nine tails was ripped open. There was marks upon the, that, that whip. There was, there was skin missing. There was upon his back just deep gouges. And it's been prophesied. The sufferings of Christ. You know that the nation of Israel should have looked upon that verse when Pilate said, Behold the man. The Lord is righteous. He has cut asunder the cords of the wicked. In Proverbs 5.22 to run to that verse. Cut off the cords. Cords is what you hang on to. God will cut off the wicked and cast them away from him to the, into hell to the lake of fire. There will be no evil or no sinners in New Jerusalem. They won't be there. Only those redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, the Lord Jesus Christ. Let them all be confounded and turn back that hate Zion. There's your Middle East countries. They're going to be turned back. They're not going to go forward. Let them be as grass upon the housetops, which wither afore it groweth up. Now they had, I'm told they have, they have flat roofs back there. Then. And there'd be dust and dirt upon the roof and seeds. And some of those seeds were germinating. But there wasn't much earth or anything like that. And the scorch of the sun and you know, so like the parable of the, the sower that went out. And it's an interesting study when you read about this grass and upon house tops. It's a thing that goes through all through the Bible. It's burnt up. Jesus speaks of. They have no root. They're not in the house. They're on top of the house. That's not where you're to be. We read about the, the wife that is uh, the, the vine by the sides of that house. 
here are here are a group of people there on top of the house, and they were just put there by wind, birds, and they have no root. That woman in the last chapter in one twenty eight, she she roots herself in the home, along the walls. And these people here, the wicked will dry up. Um, you'll see in, in like our our gutter we have here in this house, you'll see a nice healthy plant grow up. Well, first of all, it's got a lot of dirt in that gutter, and it gets the water. But there is no soil. There is no great amount of dirt for it to, to grow. Wherefore, wherewith the mower, oh, look at that, lawnmower. It's found in the Bible, grass mower. Yeah, I wonder where they got the word from when they came up with lawnmower. I wonder where, when you listen to the, to the lyrics of these songs, if you really listen to the, I mean, listen, say, God, help me protect my ears, but Lord, let me hear the lyrics of the songs I'm listening to, and I realize, you guys say to yourself, did they open up a Bible? When they came up with the with the with the name lawnmower, did somebody read Psalm 129? Because there it is. Now maybe I should have looked up, and I didn't. I apologize. When the first lawnmower was, but it was a quite a few years. Before, I mean, quite a few years after Psalm 129, did you find the, the name lawnmower showing up? But there it is. Uh, the King James 1611 Bible, I wouldn't want to look at what the perverted Bible say. Where would the mower filled not his hand? Now, he doesn't have a, a, a Briggs and Stratton or to come some lawnmower. He have a, a, a tool, a hand tool used to cut the grass nor he that bindeth she's his bosom it's not enough see if you go out in the fields to do wheat and all that and you're doing it by hand you, you cut it with a sickle and you grab what you cut with a big armful and you scoop it up and you throw it into your sheep not enough here and yet, but Jesus said, when it comes to time, the harvest of the tares, the angels will go out and, and cut and gather the tares together and cast them into the fire. Neither do they which go by say, the blessing of the Lord be upon you. We bless you in the name of the Lord. Now, who's not saying that? The ones who plowed Jesus back are not saying that. The ones who afflicted Israel are not saying verse 8. The grass are on top of the housetop that have no root and die. Remember the parable of the, of the sower? There was a seed that was thrown and had no root. And when the sun came up, it was scorched and it withered away. That means they got the gospel, they got the seed, they just didn't get saved. So these are people who know what to do and don't do it. They're not the ones going to say, blessings of the Lord be upon you, we bless you in the name of the Lord. So where do you come up with the phoniness of religion? There's a person out there, every few years they'll change him, because he'll die, he's a man, and they read this verse, and we, want, we don't want the people to think that we're against Israel, even though we are. They had a concordance with Hitler against the Jews. Uh, what was the nationality of the people that gave Jesus Christ the cat of nine tails? Starts with an R, ends with an E, and has O M in the middle.
I'm not pointing out anybody's religion. But Rome is the one that gave the marks upon Jesus' back. The ones that, that plowed Jesus' back shows up right in the middle of this verse. And he's going to cut their wickedness, their cords asunder. And they're going to, Bless be the Lord, we will go from. Bless be the name of the Lord. And they don't know God. They don't know the Lord at all. So if you were to challenge them, they would run over here and say, well, neither do they say, bless be the Lord, the blessings of the Lord be upon you. We bless you in the name. See, that can't be us because that, because that's what we say. And they use those very words. For a true Bible-believing Christian will say, I'll pray for you. May God bless you. Uh, this whole chapter is about those that are against the Jews, against Jesus. And they're not going to bless you. They're going to curse you, even though they say they'll bless you. How many people do you hear when you, when you sneeze, they'll say, bless you? You think they really make mean it? You ask them. The next time somebody, if you're in a store and you sneeze, someone says, bless you. Go up to them and say, excuse me. Thank you very much, but what does the word bless mean? I wonder how many could answer you. The enemies of the Jews are not going to prevail. They'll be cut off. And you'll never hear a blessing come out of their mouth. Go over there now in the Middle East and see if they've blessed those Jews. Never will it happen. Absolutely not. Oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. And when I think that God his Son not sparing sent him to die, I scarce can take it in. That on the cross, my burden gladly bearing, He bled and died to take away my sin. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. When Christ shall come with shout of acclamation and take me home, what joy shall fill my heart, then I shall bow. In humble adoration, and there proclaim, My God, how great Thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee, How 